Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Going solar is in a lot of cases an amazing investment that can save you money on your energy bill while also contributing to a cleaner environment. And to me, most importantly, makes you heck of a lot more independent. However, before you make the leap, it is actually crucial to understand a key factor that can significantly impact your return on your solar investment. And that is your net metering policy or your buyback rate with your utility company. So today we will talk about how to determine what best offset is for your home solar system and explain how different net metering and buyback policies affect it. Now please know right off the bat that oversizing your solar system might actually hurt you in the long run. When you install a solar system in your home, it'll generate electricity from the sun. Sounds obvious. But now seriously, during the day when the panels generate electricity, that power will first go into your home. If you have a battery, it'll also charge the battery. Now then, any excess that you don't use, that will go back to the grid through the meter. And here is the catch. So it used to be that the tail of solar said that every time you sell your power, it will credit you the exact same amount that you pay for it, basically acting as your power bank. Now solar reps would promise that dream and they would design a system to offset a true 100% of your usage in kilowatt hours and then create what's called a bill wash. So you pay $150 for your light bill, well now you don't, you pay zero and you have that extra 150 bucks in your pocket to pay for your solar system. Well, I'm going to guess that in 90% of cases, this is no longer the case and actually feasible. Now, please jump in the comments and share with the world what the buyback rate is where you live because they are so different depending on the state, the country, etc. Now, solar still absolutely makes sense, but it has to be properly sized to avoid too big of a system. Not necessarily too small, but too big. Now let's talk about the difference between net metering and buyback. So while these two terms are often used interchangeably, they are very different. It'll, I will give you a very easy explanation of how different they are and we will use easy small numbers. So let's say you pay 20 cents for every kilowatt hour you buy from the grid. So with net metering, if you bought 1000 kilowatt hours from the grid and you sent 800 kilowatt hours of excess solar back to the grid, you are now only bid for what's called that net difference. You can see it right here, the 200 kilowatt hours. Now with buyback, you would pay the full price for the 1000 kilowatt hours you got from the grid and then you would get a credit usually at a lower rate for 800 kilowatt hours you sent to the grid let's say 10 cents. It sounds like it's very similar, but trust me, it is not. Now you can take a look right here how different those two bills will end up. Now, this is why understanding utility, whether you're thinking of going solar or you already have a system, is actually very, very important. Now let's review the types of most common buybacks and net metering policies from best to worst and guesstimate the best offset that you want to shoot for for that best return on investment. And what I'll do is I'll stamp it in the timeline below. So if this one doesn't apply to you, just skip to the following one or the next one that does apply to you. Let's start with the ideal one. That's what I like to call it. This one's called one to one. This one can be found in certain states and in my area in Melissa called Grayson Collin Co-op. They offered that, that's in the North Dallas area. So now if you are in the DFW area and have Grayson Collin or GCEC as your provider and you don't have solar, I do not know what you're doing. Get it ASAP and get that best buyback or net metering policy and get it grandfathered in before they change it. The way one, to one net metering works is exactly what it is, one for one. So if you overproduce during the day and you sell it to your utility, they give you a one to one credit. Now that can be in form of a dollar value or a kilowatt hour value. This form of net metering is absolutely amazing and you should shoot for 100% offset of your annual kilowatt hour usage. Now for those who are with this type of net metering policy, I can say you can skip the battery or wait with it 
unless you do experience a ton of outages. Because with one-to-one, -one, you really will not benefit financially from having it or from having the battery for self-consumption. Two, the next best thing. And this will be your net metering that is capped at import. So they offer one-to-one -one during the billing cycle, but then at the end of the month, they basically wipe out your slate. Literally, this net metering policy allows you to use the utility as your battery bank during the billing cycle, but then if you leave too much credits with them and then they net it and your net ends up being negative, you might basically just lose that. So you don't want to overproduce too much throughout the year. You can take a look at this annual graph right here. If you use gas for your heating, you can see that in the winter time, your utility bills are lower. You want to shoot for producing enough power throughout the year, but not too much to where you cover your highest months because then you end up giving so much of that free power to your utility for free and they basically profit from it by selling it to other people. So the goal here is to be as independent as possible and the tricky part here is that the battery won't be that big of a help when it comes to your daily consumption. And that is because your utility works as your bank during the billing cycle, they just don't pay you anything at the end of it. In those co-ops, we like to say 60 to 80% offset, but again, this will depend on your bill graph and if your home is electric or has gas heating in wintertime. Now, obviously, you could oversize your system to generate enough by month to cover your highest usage month, but then look how much you would really send of that extra power to you to your retailer for free and they would actually start benefiting from your investment. Now that's pretty much it when it comes to the net metering policies. Now we're gonna move on to buybacks and those are a bit different because they're not considered net metering plans since they're not, there's no netting of anything. Now those buybacks are going to probably be the most common because they are the most advantageous to the utility companies. Buyback is usually at a lower rate than what you pay per kilowatt hour. Now, this is where the battery now start or can start making sense for self-consumption. This one is the trickiest because it really depends on when during the day the power is used. Now, hear me out. So, anything you gener anytime you generate power, your home will use that power to power things in your home then excess will go back to the utility company and you get your credit for it at that certain rate. Now, during the night, you will then buy power from the utility company at whatever rate that they sell it to you. Then at the end of the month, they will look at what you have, what you have sold to them and what they sold to you. This will usually show as usage, what you bought and credits, what you sold them. Now, those will then go against one another as dollar values. Now, some utilities will pay you 99% of the value and some will pay you 20% of the value. This is why if you're not be being fully compensated for your power, there are obviously a few options, but you want to be smart about it. So one, you should go for a smaller system so you do not overproduce too much power during the day. Again, this will depend on each home, but let's go 50 to 80% offset. The better the buyback rate, the higher you can go. The second option is to get a battery properly sized. So instead of sending those five kilowatt hours of your excess to them, you put that into your battery during the day so that at night you can discharge your battery and that five kilowatt hours of credit is now worth the 20 cents to you. Now, in this case, your offset might be much closer to 100%, but again, you want to make sure you have a good bill analysis done and that your rep understands when your power is used. Please let me know if that makes any sense to you. If not, I will try to do a much more detailed dive into understanding the billing with solar panels because trust me, it is a big mystery to a lot of people. And I want you to know that 100% offset is not necessarily the goal here. Some people may say, oh, well, they just pay me six cents for credits. 
I don't want to go solar. Well, they can also double your utility bill tomorrow. We are literally at their mercy. So whatever business we can take away from them and get even 50% offset is better than nothing or 100% with a battery, if that makes financial sense, that is. Now, I do wanna make a point here, and this is regarding people living in the Encore or the um, the North Texas area. And we have a little bit of a problem here with systems that are of oversized because some retailers where they will actually kick you off the plant if you overproduce too much. So what I would say, ease yourself into it. You can always add more panels to your system, but installing too big of a system and then taking the panels away, usually it's much more difficult, if not almost impossible. So just do it slowly. You don't have to get it totally big system right off the bat. All right, guys, this is it for today. Thank you so much for sticking with me here. I appreciate your time. Please let me know your thoughts and comments down below and let me know what your thoughts are on this question. Are batteries the solution to this ever-changing net metering policies with our utility companies? Make sure to let me know. Thank you so much. Also, if you are in the DFW area, don't forget you can get a quote from me and I can also explain to you based on your utility company, depending on who you are with, what best buyback you should get. So don't hesitate, reach out. There is gonna be a phone number somewhere there or you can text it, you can call it, or you can email me as well. Thank you so much.